A very warm welcome to Adi's News Hour with it. I'm Shifarao Lako. Do stay with us. USAID Administrator Samantha Power is due to visit Addis Ababa. She says her visit is to press the government of Ethiopia to allow full and unhindered humanitarian access to prevent famine in Ethiopia's Tigray region. But many are voicing concern that this is part of a conspiracy of opening up a so-called humanitarian corridor to arm the TPLF and weaken Ethiopia through prolonged conflicts. We have produced the following story in this regard. In her own words, Samantha Power is coming to Ethiopia to press the government of Ethiopia to allow full and unhindered humanitarian access to prevent famine in Ethiopia's Tigray region. But while Ethiopia is a sovereign nation with all the legal mandate to decide on major routes and corridors, the Western world is erroneously pressurizing the East African nation to open up the Sudanese border. This, according to many Ethiopians, is a recipe for disaster. Ethiopians have already begun voicing disapproval of her visits as there should not be free corridor in any sovereign country and also such requests by aid agencies that endangers the security and safety of the country. There has been a conspiracy on the part of the TPLF and its Western cronies to have the Sudanese corridor opened. The TPLF has come up with its so-called border issue of the Walkite so that Ethiopian armed forces leave the border town of Humara. If and when this happens, then the TPLF and its allies will use the corridor for unhindered access to weapons. In an article featured on the Star, an Ethiopian political analyst, Wassan Malaku, with years of experience in teaching and research, writes that starvation must be averted by all means. However, in trying to press the government of Ethiopia to allow full and unhindered humanitarian access to Tigray, the writer urges her to understand the situation on the ground better. Critical as humanitarian access is, it is not necessarily in the gift of the Ethiopian government alone. The senseless war imposed by the TPLF has made access to Tigray a dangerous adventure. While Power's initiative is noble in the words of the writer, the U.S. aid chief must have lost the real picture when she laid everything on the Ethiopian government, arguing that the TPLF was using hunger as a means of blockade and trying to win the Western attention, the writer calls for caution. Citing that the TPLF is leaving no stone unturned to undeservedly use the genocide claim for its purpose, the writer urges power to understand the reality as a former seasoned journalist with exposure to gripping stories like the Bosnia War. Samantha Power, the writer argues, might still be unduly influenced by the press rather than wait for clear evidence, so she is accused of reaching unwarranted conclusion on the make-believe genocide claims flung on the Ethiopian government by the likes of Christophe. Christoph is writing and tweeting on Ethiopia today, routinely and wrongly accusing the Ethiopian government of deliberately starving its citizens in Tigray and praising the distorted, malicious and irresponsible reporting by his NYT colleague Dilkan Welsh. The writer urges power to allow herself the patience to watch, listen and learn, just as her younger self did in Croatia back then, that the Amharas and Tigrayans are not Serbs and Croats. Ethiopia is not Yugoslavia. According to the writer, the war is imposed on Ethiopia by a criminal gang bent on returning itself to power to play Act 2 of its quasi apartheid minority rule over the rest of Ethiopia. The people of Tigray are its primary victims considered only as a tool for its selfish agenda. No group is more hated and despised than the TPLF in Ethiopia today or ever. The writer urges power to listen to her hostess during her time in Addis. He says, I recall how frustrated Miss Power was when Osan Suji rejected her commendable attempts to persuade her to condemn the persecution of the Rohingya during her visit in 2012. In making the case for congressional authorization of the use of force against Assad in 2015, Ms. Powell wrote memorably, quote, I believed that the most important part of decision-making was not the justness of one's intentions, but the effectiveness of one's actions. 
this time on Ethiopia. Her humanitarian cause is just but the background diplomatic saber-rattling is worrying with potentially catastrophic consequences. The writer says, I urge Ms. Power and her government to exercise caution. The whole world is watching Africa even more so. Ethiopia matters. In fact, the TPLF bandits and its diaspora allies are openly denouncing Ethiopia and Ethiopianism as the following video clearly shows. <laughs> On another note, Professor Alamayo Gabramariam writes that there is substantial evidence Hillary Clinton, Susan Rice, and Samantha Power were the three principal advocates of war against Libya in 2011, setting the North African nation on a free fall ever since. Since November 2020, the likes of Susan Rice, Anthony Blinken, and Jake Sullivan have been openly and publicly looking for Ethiopia's breaking point, he has argued. Now, in this connection, the director of the Institute for Peace and Security Studies at the Addis Ababa University, Dr. Yunus Adai, has told us the following over uh, the phone. Take a listen to this. Yeah, the most important point is whether she truly is worried about Ethiopia or maybe for their previous commitment to the previous, particularly TVLF led EPIDF government. So it is quite open question to the entire international community. So in my personal view, I think it is quite good to see it from at least two, three angles. The first one is this person has been working for such a long time, over maybe 10 to 20 years, to my understanding, uh, when I see her textbooks, uh, her, her excellent work on humanitarian dignities. She might be concerned, as we saw in some parts of Africa and Europe. However, when you come back to Ethiopian situation, I think it seems to be a leap service. We must be very careful. Secondly, it is also good to, for us to notice that people listen to what they like to listen to rather than what you tell them. People see what they like to see rather than what is objectively on the ground. So, to my understanding, the concern, the worry, is more of why TPLF should be leaving its control in the command center and be away from the remote control from Washington, D.C. So that's really what I can possibly say. Now, asked by the BBC about the difficulty of uh, getting aid to Tigray regional state, the Atlantic Council's deputy director of the Center for Africa said the cause is the TPLF itself. The director said although the government of Ethiopia had declared a unilateral ceasefire, the TPLF terrorist group has not stopped fighting with neighboring Amhara and Afar regional states. She also described the TPLF clique as a group that has been torturing Ethiopians for over 30 years. Let's take a look. There are fears that this crisis uh, could worsen given further fighting. Let's get more on this story for you. Uh, Bronwyn Bruton is the di Deputy Director of the Africa Centre at the Atlantic Council in Washington. Uh, Bronwyn, thanks for joining us on BBC News. Uh, what are you hearing about the ability of these uh, aid trucks to get through? Well, obviously, it's been a tremendous challenge for aid agencies to get through to Tigray for a number of different reasons. Um, one of them being that the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, which is the rebel group that's fighting the Ethiopian army, has not accepted a ceasefire that's been implemented by the Ethiopian government and has expanded its war outside of Tigray into the neighboring regions, including Afar, which is the area that's being used as a staging ground, uh, the only route available indeed to get um, supplies into Makale. And so this has caused an incredible backlog that aid agencies claim is being aggravated by the Ethiopian government. It must be hard actually for the aid ag agencies to know where to get the supplies to. They'll be looking at camps, they'll be looking at almost refugee settlements, but people are still on the move. 
There is a great deal of population displacement in the region, although it is reported that since the TPLF is now entirely in control of Tigray, that much of those movements have settled down and that the delivery of aid within Tigray itself, once the aid can get in, has actually become a little bit more simple than it was when the area was in active conflict zone. And you were saying, you know, fighting is still going on, indeed, has been spreading. I mean, there are deep roots to this tension, to the, to the anger between the different factions in Ethiopia. There are. Uh, obviously, the TPLF was a dictatorship for almost 30 years, and it ruled Ethiopia brutally. Um, since the coming to power of Api Ahmed, um, the TPLF has mostly been confined in its own northern region. But in November, it launched an attack on federal forces, which has led to a long and increasingly brutal conflict between the two sides. There's an insurgency that's underway in Tigray, and the TPLF has threatened even to march on Addis Ababa in an effort to retake power at the national level. This has obviously caused Ethiopians who lived in terror of the TPLF for decades to feel a great deal of, of fear and anger. And it's leading to reprisals, particularly among the Afar and Amhara communities against aid workers who are trying to deliver aid that they fear will be diverted to the TPLF. Bronwyn Bruton, thanks very much for joining us from Washington. Now, the Deputy Director General of the Ethiopian Mass Media Authority, Yonathan Tasfai, recently said the biased media coverage of the law enforcement operation in Tigray has hampered the international community from realizing the truth about Ethiopia's situation. He says foreign media have prevented the international community from knowing the realities on the ground by distorting information about Ethiopia. Here is what he said. So the media authority has been following the stories that have been published and broadcasted uh, via international medias. And we monitor it daily, and we have a trained uh, analysis that we make. And based on our findings, it has been uh, outrageously uh, disappointing and unprofessional that many of them um, have been engaged in uh, disinformations and misinformations, uh, publishing and broadcasting uh, even video contents, doctored video contents that cannot be authenticated and uh, cannot be verified. Uh, that is uh, still continuing even uh, to this day. Um, just uh, ju just a moment ago, I, I was I was just watching uh, or reading a story published on one of the international medias about dead bodies found in a uh, 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 and uh, they come up with some stories that they cannot verify. So this has been going on for about uh, seven or six months continuously. So at the beginning we told where our assessment was that it was because of the lack of information or because they are reporting from uh, very far away. But uh, recently we've come to conclude or have, um, or the, the evidences, the train shows that it is rather um, a very coordinated uh, uh, campaign against the Ethiopian government in, in general. The, uh, Ethiopia uh, in, in regards to the law enforcement operation in Tigray. So using that as an excuse, uh, it seems that the information warfare is onto something which is negative for uh, Ethiopia and its ter territory and integrity and national security. So it, ha it has hampered hugely to to shadow what has been going on in Ethiopia, to deprive of the international community to know what the facts and the truth is. Now, Ethiopians and Eritreans living in Germany have held a rally under the title Peace and Stability for the East Africa region. According to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the rally held in Frankfurt was organized by Ethiopian's Forum for Dialogue and Cooperation in partnership with members of the Eritrean community in Germany. During the occasion, the demonstrators chanted various slogans that protest the interference of some foreign powers in the affairs of other countries. 
They've also urged the international community to denounce the war crimes being committed by the terrorist TPLF. The demonstrators expressed readiness to support the Ethiopian National Defense Force in its endeavor to protect the national sovereignty of the country. That's according to the Ethiopian news agency. Now, members of the Ethiopian diaspora has challenged a U.S. congresswoman to reconsider the resolution she spearheads about Ethiopia, which the U.S. Congress was planning to vote on. Talking to ETV English, members of the Ethiopian Peace Corps said the congresswoman has been convinced about the need to revise the resolution after the real situation in Ethiopia was explained to her. Members of the Peace Corps pointed out that an active and constructive engagement of the Ethiopian diaspora has a decisive role to quash any attempt that could endanger Ethiopia's sovereignty. Solomon Daniel reports. The U.S. Congress was planning to vote on a resolution last week as part of its continued pressure on the government of Ethiopia. In a discussion she had with Chepson of the African Union, Congresswoman Karen Bass indicated that sanction was still possible on Ethiopia if things won't show any positive progress. After her shocking announcement, Ethiopians in the diaspora approached the Congresswoman to explain the real situation in Ethiopia. Their effort resulted in the postponement of voting. The Ethiopian diaspora had a conversation with Karen Bass in her office um, the past Friday, July 23rd. Um, it was um, somewhat fruitful, um, I believe. I think even prior to that, the Ethiopian diaspora has been doing a lot of campaign, Twitter campaigns. We've also did um, voter voice. Uh, we've individually met with our senators and representatives locally. Um, and we've been doing a lot just to raise awareness as well as to say, you know, we, we are tax-paying citizens. Um, though we are born in Ethiopia, we are American citizens. And our voice seemed like it's not being heard. Um, and there seems to be selective hearing um, within the office or the administration. Um, so um, during the meeting, um, there was really great conversation. Uh, we had a really great team that participated, that addressed some of our uh, major concerns and um, even during the meeting she did mention that you know it needed to be revised. The successful intervention Ethiopians made to challenge senators and congressmen and women is a testament that when coming together Ethiopians can reverse the irreversible they said. Uh, the reason why uh, Senator, uh, I mean Congresswoman uh, Karen Bass uh, ha have been forced to talk to the Ethiopian community because we showed that pressure to demonstrations uh, by knocking their doors, telling them that we have our voting rights, if you wish, that we can use next time around when elections come and we should be able to exercise that. When the Biden government was coming to power, the Ethiopians uh, believed that because Trump was uh, waging pretty much war against Ethiopia, we thought Biden would have uh, Biden government would have a sensible approach to this whole Ethiopian agenda but what we realized and what we found out was uh, some of the cronies of the PLFs come back to uh, uh, the Biden government different forms as advisors, as uh, part of the executive branch. And the same thing is that we find some in the uh, corridors of the Congress. So we like to see that we uh, show our force to support the Ethiopian agenda uh, by talking to our senators and congressmen and doing the same because at the end of the day, this is information age. The kind of information that you have there available is critical in winning the, uh, the war. Members of the Peace Corps underscore the need to work towards a concerted effort so that Ethiopians in all corners of the world will be able to protect the well-being of the country. The uh, foreign governments cannot choose their own cronies to bring someone who is going to be uh, executing their agenda. It should be people's agenda, it should be Ethiopian people's agenda that should be uh, governing what's going on in this country. Other forces from outside cannot be the one to govern our country. This is, Ethiopia is a sovereign country, and it has been all stated throughout our history. This, is not, uh, this generation has to understand that and fight for it, and it is our role to assert the independence of Ethiopia, the sovereignty of Ethiopia, wherever we are. Though the plan of the Congress to vote on the resolution is still up in the air, the effort made by members of the Ethiopian diaspora to let the world know the truth has been gaining momentum it was learned.
Now moving on, Ethiopia is remembered as the founder of the Pan-African Paths, uprooting foreign aggressors. The Battle of Adwa is a case in point. Now it is writing new history by constructing its Grand Renaissance Dam. The project is lifting the spirit of other upper African countries to construct mega projects like the GERD by own uh, resources. Haftam Washagri reports. The government of Ethiopia is constructing a multi-billion dollar project to alleviate the shortage of electricity across the country. Talking to ETVs, Kora said realizing the flagship project remains to be a showcase for upper right ranked countries by capitalizing the sense of Pan-Africans. The success of GERD lifts the spirit of other African countries to construct mega projects like Ethiopia, and it brings down outdated foreign interventions against Ethiopia, the scholar Salamayo Areda and Umar Red indicated. The building of the dam itself has somehow lifted the spirit of the Raparian countries, the African nations. You see, Ethiopia has taken a lead in this that Africans can do big projects like the GERD by themselves. You see, this, is, this is a big message to the African people. This is like Adwa, mind you. Now, this spirit will be better lifted up with a GERD feeling, with a GERD reaching a stage where it can produce some amount of about 375 megawatt of energy. This is a big boost in the spirit of Africans. And now, the Southern Sudan is, uh, is anticipating, contemplating building an electric dam, probably Uganda uh, and Rwanda. All this, this is their spirits are lifted up and they learn to stand together. That is, that is a big message the Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is giving to the African nation. It's telling to the rest of the Nile Basin countries that we can do it. Mm -hmm. Africa and Africans can do it on our own without uh, the, the need, uh, without a blessing from the West or for, for, from any Western institution. That's why the, there is a lot of pressure against Ethiopia uh, around the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam because it is, it, it, Ethiopia is setting a pre, uh, president uh, uh, that the rest of the Nile Basin countries would eventually follow, especially the upstream countries. Regarding complaints of the low ripe rank countries, the scholar said GERD will bring various advantages as well as power integration for African countries. East Africa, mind you, it is benefiting, it is going to benefit from the supply of this electricity from the GERD. And power is a big economic base. It's a big power base. So, uh, it is also, the GERD is going also to serve as a regional integration instrument. Djibouti, Eritrea, Southern Sudan, probably the Sudan itself. Believe me, the Sudan will be benefit better than anybody, even Ethiopia. Because yeah, at the lower level, uh, they have their dam at 100 kilometers from the GERD. That dam is going to receive clean water, free of... Uh, yeah, so they are going to get electricity. They are going to, uh, to use it for irrigation as the river comes. And they are going to be saved from annual floods. There are fears from uh, uh, various corners, in various corners, that the, the example Ethiopia is setting would turn the entire Africa into, um, you know, that uh, self-dependent uh, path. And eventually those who have uh, huge interest on the continent of Africa, those who have been exploiting the entire continent of Africa for centuries would lose this uh, dominance. And that's the, the source of uh, the pressure against Ethiopia from multiple sides. Both the first and second water filling of GERD assured the rest of the world that Ethiopia has no intention to harm low ripe rank countries, Omer added. They have always uh, tried to portray this as a, as a dam 
falsely as a dam that would stop the flow of the Nile waters into Egypt. Mm -hmm. the, the first round of filling happened. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened to a, uh, downstream. So water mm -hmm. uh, continued to flow and Ethiopia was proven right. Mm -hmm. uh, the second round of filling happened. The uh, water continued to flow uh, without any significant harm uh, to the downstream countries. Ethiopia is proven uh, right again. Uh, so when the Egyptians realized that, um, uh, you know, this they, these uh, scapegoats, this uh, issue that they, are, they have used to externalize their, their internal issues mm -hmm. is, is, is just uh, um, a smoke screen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just no more there. It's not a reality. Uh, they knew it actually, but they continued to lie. Information obtained from the Ministry of Water, Irrigation and Electricity shows Ethiopia is ready to generate electric from two turbines in the coming months. Welcome back. You're still watching Addis News Hour. The former members of the Ethiopian Air Forces say they are ready to carry out the government's mission to fight against the TPLF terrorist group. The former Ethiopian Air Force Association has stated its position on current affairs in a program held at Bishop to Town. The association's patron, Brigadier General Tasfai Habtamarem, said, Ethiopia is currently at war both internally and externally. Following this, former members of the armed forces expressed their desire to do their utmost to prevent Ethiopia's problems. Colonel Tamru Hailu, deputy patron of the association, recalled that the veterans had their skill and abilities in battle, highlighting they had shown strong arm in the past against many attacks targeting Ethiopia and they would repeat these heroic acts. Now, in our sports update, Lamecha Grma and Gudaf Zagaye put silver and bronze medals respectively back in the hands of Ethiopia in the 2020 Tokyo 